Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the story of World War I. This is actually my 10th video on this topic, and we're going to look at the second year of the war. There was a country that was planning to betray Germany, but do you know which country it was? Well, if you want to find out, make sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned. So, which country was planning to betray the German side? It was Italy. As I mentioned in my previous video, Italy joined the side of the German-Austro-Hungarian Empire because it failed to compete with France for Tunisia and joined the German-Austro-Hungarian Union in anger. However, Italy made a grave mistake because it forgot that it was not only an enemy of France in Europe but also had fierce territorial disputes with Austria-Hungary. Italy's main territorial claims were in the territory of Austria-Hungary. Although, for now, Germany and Austria-Hungary have temporarily shelved their dispute, the problem has not been solved. At this time, Italy began to expand into Africa and invade Ethiopia. However, unexpectedly, Ethiopia received help from France. Although Italy was allied with Germany and Austria-Hungary, the two countries did not help Italy invade Ethiopia. The result was that Italy felt very aggrieved. In Ethiopia, the war against Italy in 1896 was a rare example of a complete victory in the history of modern anti-aggression wars. Luckily for Ethiopia, its opponent was Italy. Italy was very unhappy with Germany and Austria-Hungary for not helping them, and they never saw Britain as an enemy. When the Triple Alliance Treaty was signed, Italy made it clear that it could not be considered directed against Britain under any circumstances. Later, the Anglo-German conflict intensified and Italy found itself in a difficult position, not wanting to offend either Germany or Britain. Now that the war has broken out, everyone is asking Italy to take a stand. Italy used the excuse that the Triple Alliance contract had expired and announced that they would remain neutral. In reality, they would align with whoever offered them the most benefits. At the beginning of World War I, the German army was winning on all fronts, and Italy saw this as an opportunity to benefit. Germany and Austria-Hungary promised to give Italy a piece of Austro-Hungarian territory after the war and also agreed to give up France-controlled Tunisia to Italy. However, Italy felt that these promises were not concrete and could be easily denied later. So, Italy tried to bargain with Germany, asking for 3 million rifles, 10,000 cannons, and 5,000 locomotives. Wilhelm II, the German emperor, was outraged by this list and said that Italy was asking for the whole of Germany. He even insulted the Italian king, Vittorio Emanuele III, calling him a dwarf because of his short stature. Wilhelm II tore up the list in anger as he believed Italy was making unreasonable demands. Germany's attitude makes Italy very angry. If you don't take me to play, then we will find Britain to play. Britain looks. Italy itself took the initiative to make friends with itself that is naturally very enthusiastic, promised, as long as you join us, land or something. The problem is easy to say. How much they promise, we give you double. In fact, most of the territory that Italy hopes to obtain, most of it belongs to Austria-Hungary. We have said this problem, so as far as the British side is concerned it is not to use britain's own territory to italy in addition britain also promises after the victory of the war some german colonies in africa were also ceded to italy and what lent italy 500 million pounds as a war fee italy found a calculator in order to calculate the benefits of the keys were broken and finally concluded that it was necessary to follow britain this transaction was cost effective so on april 26th 1915, Italy and the Allies signed the London Secret Treaty, officially withdrew from this side of the alliance between Germany and Austria-Hungary, and declared war on Austria-Hungary on May 23rd. On May 24th, it broke off diplomatic relations with Germany. For this behavior, Germany and Austria-Hungary naturally hated to gnash their teeth. Austria-Hungary sent a letter to the whole army, cursed Italy, except for not using dirty words basically used all the curse words in the dictionary, then unfortunately, it is useless. The first thing Italy rebelled against Germany and pledged allegiance to Britain was to attack Austria-Hungary. We generally say that Austria-Hungary is a power in disguise. In fact, 
Italy is worse than Austria-Hungary at this time, although Italy completed the bourgeois revolution and national unification, but still faced a series of social problems, the development of the North and the South is seriously unbalanced. The North of Turin, Milan, can barely be regarded as in line with. International standards, most of the southern region is still in poverty. In Sicily, that is the Italian mafia raging, the 1911 census, the national illiteracy rate over 10 years old, as high as 37.1%, while in France at the same time, only 11.9%, Germany is zero. In 1914, Italy's per capita income is only half of France. The degree of industrialization is quite low, steel production is almost zero, Coal depends on imports from Britain. Basically, it is a country that relies on agriculture to eat. The key is that it is not enough. It is necessary to import a large amount of barley, and every year a large number of people flee to other countries. So Italy, at that time, had the nickname of poor bastard imperialism, and what level of war such a poor country fought, you can figure it out with your toes. Sure enough, after the declaration of war, Italy slowly swallowed, grinded, and prepared for war for more than a month before launching an offensive. The border between Italy and Austria-Hungary was 350 kilometers long, of which 300 kilometers were treacherous mountains, only the lower reaches of the Isonzo River, which was a plain area. But it was also densely forested and full of obstacles. In order to break through the defensive line, the commander-in-chief of the Italian army, General Cadorna, mobilized 875,000 people, a very large number, but weapons and ammunition and even means of transport were extremely scarce, and the morale of the troops was also very low, which showed that the hatred of war had a firm mass base in Italy, and on June 23, 1915, two Italian army groups, 200,000 people and 200 cannons, the first battle of the ISE Sanzo was launched and the army army of Austria-Hungary on the opposite side had long been prepared, relying on the offensive and artillery positions to hold on. The artillery positions of Austria-Hungary were usually divided into two parts, the two positions, which could cover each other, and the bank of the Isonzo River was a steep rock wall. The Italian army, after crossing the river under artillery fire, had to start rock climbing. In an unprotected place, swept down by machine guns and pieces, officers just insensitively urged the troops to cross the river and drove the soldiers like sheep rushing to the gunpoint of the Austro-Hungarian army. A large number of corpses floated in the Isonzo River and the scene was like hell on earth. In this way, a group of people despite heavy casualties, after three days of hard fighting, finally broke through the ridge, but what awaited them was not victory. The Austro-Hungarian army, after inflicting huge casualties on the Italians, orderly retreated to the higher ridge position behind, easily waiting here for the Italians to attack. The Italian soldiers could only drag their exhausted bodies and climbed again in a hail of bullets, and a junior officer lamented, judging by this speed. Of advance, before we reach Vienna, hell is frozen. On the 5th of July, the Italian army finally reached the first fortification of the Austro-Hungarian army with difficulty and blew up several gaps with explosive barrels, but the Austro-Hungarian army that reacted soon began to organize a counterattack and the gaps were closed again, and a few days later, Austro-Hungarian reinforcements arrived and the Italians, no longer able to continue to advance, had to retreat and the first battle of the Isonzo River ended in the defeat of Italy. But within a few days, the Italian army added new forces and attacked again, and as a result, it ended hastily again. Two battles of the Isonzo River were fought, the Italian army suffered 60,000 casualties, and the Austro-Hungarian army also lost a lot of losses, 45,000. The Italians felt that the reason why they did not win was because there were too few artillery, so they went back and moved all the Italian artillery, a total of 1,200 cannons, even including bronze cannons, and moved the cannons in the Franco-Prussian War, and even the Napoleonic Wars, to the front. Then the third and fourth attacks were launched, but unfortunately, although there were many artillery and too few shells, the Italian army still did not make any progress, and by December 1915, after four battles on the Isonzo, the Italian army had only occupied a few strongholds, and for half a year, Italy's entire contribution to the Allies was only to contain the strength of ten divisions of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and had no other effect at all. 
The Italian army did not achieve decent results, but Italy still had a navy, but the Italian navy at that time were some outdated old warships, slow speed, weak firepower, thin armor, lack of maintenance, known as rust fleet. In order to shell the coast of Austria-Hungary, the Italian navy removed old guns from decommissioned warships and then installed them on some pontoon ships. Each pontoon boat was equipped with two six-inch guns. Each group of three was towed by a tugboat. The speed was only three knots. Anyway, this pontoon boat to fight, although it is not good, but shelling the fortifications on the coast, still somewhat useful, harassing the Austro-Hungarian coastal defense forces in the form of small battles, and even shelling shipyards and diest, and forcing the Austro-Hungarian navy to abandon their most important shipbuilding center, relying only on some relatively backward shipyards. However, these were at best small harassing small battles, which had no decisive impact on the entire war situation, and throughout 1915, the southern front of the eastern front was in full swing, while the most important western front fell into a calm Germany, France. There are no major military operations, but of course they are not messing around, but preparing for a larger battle, and at this time Germany is preparing for the next attack. This time, they look at a small town called Verdun. So what kind of battle will take place in Verdun? Please subscribe to my channel to tell you the story of World War I.